Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're going to be showing you how to use our new Slicer plugin transitions to create something awesome that looks like this. Okay, so here we are in Premiere Pro, and we're going to be taking a look at how to use these Slicer transitions to make some awesome looking videos. They're really simple to use. But first, if you need help installing these transitions, we've actually got a tutorial all about that, and I'll link it for you to check out. But right now, let's check out where you can actually find these transitions within Premiere Pro. Because these are native plugin transitions, you can find them with all the other ones that come pre-installed within Premiere Pro. Inside your effects panel, go down to Video Transitions, and you should see a folder labeled MA Slicer. Inside you should see seven variations of this effect. Bounce, Ease In, Ease In and Out, Ease Out, Elastic In, Elastic Out, and stutter. To apply any of these, all you have to do is click and drag them to the beginning, the cutting point, or the end of any of your clips. And already you have a stylish transition that's just ready to go. Awesome! But you don't have to use these transitions just as they are. You can actually customize them to a really high degree by clicking and highlighting the transition, and then going up to effect controls. Here you can see that we have a bunch of different parameters that we can adjust. The first one is slices. This dictates how many slices there will be in the final effect. To be clear, this is not the number of cuts, but instead the number of finished segments. So if we set this to the lowest number, 2, we can see that we have 2 sections. Moving up to 3, we can see that we have 3 segments. And if we go all the way up to the maximum of 50, we can see that we get a lot more. I won't make you count all of them. And instead of keying in the specific numbers, you can also drop down this toggle here and click and drag the slider amount. Next up is Angle. By default, this is set to 0, which shows up as a straight horizontal cut. By changing up the angle, we can see that we get a different slice look. Changing the angle to 90 degrees makes the cut vertical. And changing it to something like 45 will make it a diagonal cut. And you have the possibility of any variation in between. Cross direction is a simple on off checkbox. Basically, when it's checked on, the direction that these slices will move will be in the opposite direction for every other one. By unchecking this box, we can see that each of these move in the same direction. Simple as that. Next up is edge feather. This just basically takes the edge of frame and determines the amount of fall off that it will have so that it's not as harsh of an edge during the transition. This also may extend the amount of footage that you have as a result, depending on whether or not the mirror function is set to active. After that, we have random start. This on-off toggle switch basically determines whether or not your slices will move sequentially or randomly. Let me show you what I mean. If we turn this off so that it's not checked, we can see that our slices start to move in order, one at a time sequentially. Then, if we turn it on, we can see that these slices start to move in random and a more chaotic fashion. Still pretty much in the same timing so that they all start and end within the same duration window, so none of these slices are sticking around for longer than the actual transition duration, but for example one of the edge slices might actually finish after one of the middle slices. After that we have random seed, which if you change this value will basically cycle through a different order of when each slice will actually start and finish. It's still chaotic, but it's just moving around the priority of which slices move first and last. Motion Blur is another binary on-off checkbox where you're telling these slices moving around to have a directional blur associated with the direction that they're traveling. Basically, it just makes it look more realistic if you have the motion blur on, and a more crisp and stylized version if you have it turned off. The motion blur amount is pretty self-explanatory. When the motion blur setting is turned on, it's basically just decreasing or increasing the amount of blur that's occurring during the course of the transition. And you can see exactly what that looks like here. And finally, mirror simply takes any excess footage and reflects it so that it more naturally blends in with the rest of the image. Okay, so now that you actually understand these parameters a little bit more, let's go over some examples of how you can get even more out of them than just using them between a couple clips. First of all, you can use these plugins for titles. 
The nice thing about doing this is that these transitions respect the transparency and empty space around the titles. So you end up getting an effect that's isolated to just that. Because of this, you can get some effects that look like this. And because the titles are going to be much smaller typically than the size of your frame, you'll likely have to add more segments to be able to see this effect really taking place. But as long as your titles are centered, you can actually still get some really nice effects even with only two slices. Next up, you can use this creatively to show elements of a story. A really great example would be with two characters, and to use the slice transition to visually separate them into different sections. This could help, for example, if in the story, you're trying to show that emotionally they're becoming more distant. Just bring down the number of slices to two, set the angle to 90, and make sure that your two characters are placed on opposite sides of the middle of frame. And finally, you can create a little bit more of a stylized cut effect like this. It's actually really simple. All you have to do is set up your slice to be the same as the example we just created before. But feel free to change up the rotation to whatever you like. I'm going to make mine completely horizontal so that all I have to do is change the angle to zero. Create a white rectangle. Set it to be skinny and the entire length of your frame, and over top of the middle of frame. I'd suggest going here and turning on safe margins to use them as a guide to find the exact center of frame. Next, go into your effects panel and find the transform effect, and apply it to your solid layer. Set shutter angle to 180 degrees, and uncheck use composition shutter angle. Then you can set a keyframe for position for where you'd actually like this animation to be finished. Then move your playhead back a little bit earlier and move it to where you'd like it to come from off screen. Then set the opacity to drop off as the transition begins to set in. Then you should have something that looks like this. You could stop here if you'd like, but I like to create a little triangle or other shape of your choosing by creating another solid box and using the pen tool to subtract one of the points so that you end up with only three. Apply the same transform effect from before and keyframe it to line up with the line that you created before. Finally, throw in a couple of sound effects and you should be left with something that looks like this. Awesome. And if you want to change up the angle to something different, it's actually really simple. Just nest your solid layers together, then change the angle of this clip box here to the angle you're wanting the footage to be at. And if it's not reaching the edges, uncheck uniform scale here, and stretch the width out until it's completely past the edges of frame on both sides. Then match up your angle of the transition, and you've got a new angle for your cut animation. And guys, that's just been a quick look at how to get the most out of our new Slicer plugins for Premiere Pro. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, check out the rest of our native plugins as well as all of our Premiere Pro templates and presets. And if you're looking for some Slice sound effects that can go along with this transition, I'll make sure to leave a link to some of my personal favorites. But guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.